What's up, you guys? So today I wanted to talk to you all about the Wendy Williams documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? And I do have to admit to you, I actually have not watched the documentary because I don't want to see Wendy that way. And I feel like if Wendy was in her right mind, she would not have done a documentary like that. And I feel like the people around her know that. I feel like they know that. And so I do feel like she's being taken advantage of. And there are so many people around her that it's difficult to tell who's real and who's fake. But I do want to report on this. The Root is reporting that the producer, one of the producers of the documentary is speaking out. There's so much backlash about the documentary that he is speaking out and he's saying that he didn't know. And they didn't know that Wendy Williams had dementia when they started filming. His name is Mark Ford and he's defending the documentary. He said, quote, it was tough every single day and there were conversations that we had, all of us throughout the documentary. There was no guarantee we would air this documentary if we weren't happy with the content that we ultimately got and the editorial direction that we landed upon, which was the family's point of view and illustrating what can happen when one of your family members is put into guardianship outside of your control. We just happened to be there every day seeing the reality of the situation and we just put the camera on it and captured it. And he went on to say, honestly, it got to a point where we were more worried about what would happen to Wendy if we stopped filming than if we continued because we ultimately knew that we have the control and we can just not air this if it can't be moved into a positive redeeming direction for Wendy where we can help Wendy and hopefully other people. He says there were incredibly bad days and there's a lot of footage we shot that no one will ever see, but we felt like it was important to illustrate the difficult process that Wendy and her family were going through and frankly, what can happen to someone if they're under the care of a guardian. And so he pointed out that a lot of times, even though Wendy is supposedly under the care of a guardian, she doesn't have like a home health aide. She doesn't have anybody there with her on a daily basis. And he said, quote, I think the family thought and we all thought Shouldn't there be somebody here more often? Shouldn't there be somebody filling a refrigerator and checking in on her on a daily basis? None of those things were happening. And so that that also is concerning to me, especially considering the fact that Wendy has a son. She has a son and apparently her son takes really good care of her. And her attorney shared a video of Wendy and he said, this is Wendy when her son is taking care of her. He shared this video of Wendy in the bed talking and he said, I weighed this decision for a very long time. I have kept silent because I've been threatened with physical and financial harm, but I just couldn't keep silent any longer. While Wendy was in Miami with her son, I would often witness candid moments of their mother and son dynamic. I could tell that he loves his mother so much. And as you can see, the feeling was mutual. You can clearly see the difference between Wendy's well-being during her time here in Florida with her son caring for her and her lack thereof in New York under this guardianship. These Wendy's are not the same. How did her health deteriorate so quickly and why isn't her only child allowed to be by her side? And he's saying that because from my understanding, the court required Wendy to move back to New York and that was covered in the documentary. He said she wasn't like that when he cared for her, asked the hard questions. I took this video literally two weeks before Wendy was court ordered to return to New York to respond to a guardianship petition filed by her bank, capital bank. Let that sit in. My mother passed away on, on October 1st, 2022 from complications related to her ALS diagnosis. And I feel so blessed and grateful that I was able to spend every second that I could with her before she left this earth. If Wendy's diagnosis is true, now more than ever, her son should be allowed that same grace. He deserves it. And most importantly, Wendy deserves it. And um, I like the company I keep there. And I, you know, I do what I can. Yeah. You know, I do what I can. Yeah, I see, I see you looking real healthy now. Please, Kevin, yeah. please. Yeah, but you also like how it's really private because I know you like the gyms if they're private, of course. Yeah, I, I like it. And I also like food which is why I've got to keep on my routines with going to the gym, you know? Yeah. And like, how, how have you been eating? Like, 
because everyone looks at you, you have beautiful skin, and people want to know what's, what's the secret. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you points for saying that to me. You know that, don't you? Yeah, so, you guys, there are so many people speaking out about Wendy and the way she's presented in this documentary. I want to share this video with you from Steve Wilkos from the Steve Wilkos Show. He was friendly with Wendy, and he also spoke out about the documentary. So yesterday I'm flipping channels and I stumble across the Lifetime uh, show about where is Wendy Williams. And first of all, let me say I'm a huge Wendy Williams fan. I love Wendy Williams. I was on her show numerous times. Wendy treated me great. Um, our shows basically started at the same time. I was a big fan of her show. So I'm, I'm all in Wendy Williams' corner. When I watched last night on that show, it disturbs me because I doesn't think it does any good for Wendy. doesn't make her look good. She obviously has big-time struggles, medical conditions, and addiction. And what they're showing is somebody is not protecting her. Um, it doesn't put her in a good light. I don't see how this serves any purpose at all. Um, she should... One, uh, her manager talking about, is she ready to do a podcast? She's ready. She's been doing this for 20 years. She's no position to do anything, interviewing. She, she should not be interviewing anybody. So before you start talking about putting her back out in the public, you should be getting her help, making sure she recovers fully, and that she's able to do it. Because I got to tell you, I was disturbed and I'm saddened. So, so many people feel like Wendy is being taken advantage of. And one of the people who worked very closely with Wendy, Suzanne Bass, was one of Wendy's producers and she spoke out and she told People Magazine in regards to the documentary, she says, looking back, she now realizes there were signs of trouble health-wise for Wendy, but at the time that she was filming with Indy, she had no inkling of the conditions that Wendy Williams would eventually face. She told People Magazine, quote, but you can go back and see the show and there's really long periods of quietness where she's not speaking and you're thinking what's happening. Now, I wanted to include this in this video because I remember those moments where I thought it was dramatic pauses. I thought Wendy would stop speaking because she was doing like a dramatic pause, but there were lots of moments like that. Suzanne goes on to say that she feels like Wendy at that time was grasping for words. She said maybe that's what was happening back then. And that's in regards to Wendy's dementia and other brain problems that have now been diagnosed. When Suzanne left the Wendy Williams show, she posted this. She said, so many feelings, not sure where to begin. I suppose I could start from the beginning, as I'm sure many of you can relate. Wow, that's what I thought when I was home holding my newborn Jack when I watched the first show of The Sneak Peek. I was in awe, the height, the hair, the heels, hilariousness. I loved it all. I remember buying a hot pink purse to match the set when I got hired for season one. It wasn't until season two that I started standing within 10 feet of her throughout the show. You try standing that close to someone for so many years and not catch feelings. It wasn't until several seasons in that I was watching the after show and Wendy was showing off a painting that I had given her. We had gone to a painting class together and she was shocked by how good my painting of a tube of lipstick turned out that I gave it to her. While she was showing it off, she said, Suzanne gave it to me because she loves me. And I realized then that yes, Wendy, I do love you. She would often tell Brendan and I that had we been in high school together, we would have been friends. And for a long time, we were good friends, great friends actually. Her ability to just be funny off the cuff was what really got me. You make me laugh, I'm all yours. These past 13 years have been full of highs and lows and I wouldn't change it for the world. I got to work with my husband. I've made lifelong friends that I cannot live without. I've struggled with my emotions over this for some time. From deep sadness to relief, saying goodbye is never easy, is it? I wish nothing but the best for my Wendy from her, Suzanne. She wrote that years ago when she left the Wendy Williams show. And most recently, she posted this picture of Wendy in the audience when she wore this huge dress. And she put Flashback Friday thinking about my girl. 
And I think so many of us want to remember Wendy the way she was. I think we all want to remember Wendy as this bright and bubbly personality, a shining star, the shining star that she was. And it's just so hard to see her how she is now. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought about the documentary. What were your first reactions? What do you think about Wendy Williams' situation? And do you agree with the people that are saying that her son should be able to care for her? Leave a comment and share your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching. Layla, 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 tell us it all.